Welcome to Four Culture, exploring the richness of culture in our community through arts, heritage, preservation, and public art. There are 1,800 farms in King County populating over 50,000 acres of farmland in production. A reasonable amount of this farmland is dedicated to growing hops that become the beer we all enjoy. Of the 279 breweries in Washington State, 79 of them are located in King County. Today we explore the Hops and Crops Brew Festival and the Mary Olson Farm in Auburn, Washington. The Hops and Grops Festival is an annual craft beer and live music event. You can sample many local brews and ciders, play games, and enter raffles, all while local bands play on stage. The barn and the farmhouse are also open to explore. You can catch a glimpse of days gone by or just set a spell on the front porch and enjoy the countryside. Make sure you've got a babysitter, since this is for adults 21 and up. Proceeds from this yearly celebration go towards the continuing restoration of the Mary Olson Farm. Built in 1897, the barn was designed to hold loose hay. The farmer would use this hay fork hanging from the rafters to move hay onto platforms for drying. It could also be stored for feeding cows and horses. Patricia, you are the museum director of the White River Valley Historical Museum, correct? I am, yes indeed. We are here on the Mary Olson Farm mm -hmm. and we're in this beautiful barn yeah. which has been restored recently. The reason that we're out here um, is to talk about this, this whole complex, but there's also a festival going on. So we've got hop exhibits and all kinds of things here. Tell us about this whole restoration of the barn. Well, yes, we're in early September and that's when we have our Hops and Crops Festival. Right. It's an annual event and for that we dress up the barn with a hops exhibit and so those are historic photographs of various farms in the areas that, that grew hops and then some hop vines from my own little farm where I have some hops growing. They're kind of hard to kill so really? I, they just grow wild. Um, hops are picked and used for brewing beer so it was a very lucrative cash crop uh, say 1880 to 1900 and Mary Olson here at this farm, grew hops. She had such a good harvest one year that she was able to buy a city home. That would be a little house oh, in Auburn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. styling. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so this farm, it's a 67 acre historic farm, and it is uh, a city of Auburn Park owned by the city of Auburn, but it's managed by the White River Valley Museum, this nonprofit that I also yeah. manage. Yeah. And we, we have been in charge of restoring the farm and then programming it. And so the site is used as a park. You can come here on summer weekends and just have a lovely picnic and walk around and oh, visit nice. the farm animals and all the beautiful buildings and the hundred year old orchard. Or if you're a school child, you get to come here on field trips during the school year. Mm -hmm. Or for any other kind of pre-range tours people would like to do. So we tour, oh, at least 4,000 kids a year here. Mm. A couple thousand first graders who learn about where their food comes from. That's awesome. It is awesome. And then everybody else that wants to come here can bring their kids here for a pre-range field trip. So you were saying earlier that um, this barn didn't always look this way and for culture has played a pretty yeah. significant role in making sure that we could sit in this uh, longhouse and sweat lodge like yes. this today. Yeah. But um, that for culture has really been significant in helping to restore Absolutely. and sustain this particular well, piece when, of property. When the city purchased this farm in 1994, it had laid fallow for a number of decades. So what happens with open land in the Pacific Northwest when it lays fallow? It gets 10 foot tall blackberries. Uh. And what happens to wooden buildings? They rot. So most of these buildings had no roof. 
they uh, were far from what you see today. And for culture and other wonderful granting agencies and individuals have stepped in and we've raised about $2 million over the ensuing years and very, very carefully invested it a little step at a time to get the place fully restored as it is today. This is beautiful. This is such an important piece of Pacific Northwest history. So glad that it's been preserved. Patricia, there's so much to see all the way around the grounds. Can we take a look? Can we take I'd a walk it. around? All right, let's do it. For a walk. Let's do it. Tell me a little bit more about the history and how that's indicated around the ground. So we've got these wonderful panels. Uh -huh. There's like 12 or 13 of them around here. And we've tried to answer the big questions that somebody might have if they come to this farm. And so this one is, why have a big, beautiful barn like this? And the qu answer to that question is, if you have dry hay, you get to have horsepower and you get to have food. Awesome. And it's a hay barn. So. And then, and then there is this yes. this, truck. this I, truck. I think this has probably been here since when? Nineteen. Well, it's one of the more uh, original ways to mount a sign that thanks donors. Uh -huh. And so you can see that at the top is the State Heritage Capital Project Program, but right under that is our culture. very own for culture. Yay. Yay! They have been incredibly generous and. It's not like we got one big grant. It's like we yeah. got 30 little grants, but they add up to being a full restoration of this site. Wonderful. So, yeah. I think we're going to walk around and see a little bit All more right. of the farm. It's such a great day to do that. Here's an interesting tidbit. In 1902, the Olsons were held up by an outlaw named Harry Tracy following his escape from Oregon State Penitentiary. Said to have run with Butch Cassidy, Tracy took his own life to avoid capture. This sweet little building is Mary's weaving house. She wove rag rugs and sold them to the local J.C. Penney's for cash. Patricia, this says Mary would be surprised. She would. Why yes. would Mary be surprised? Well, you know, a healthy stream has shade, needs to have cold water, so you've got to have trees over it. It's got lots of vegetation around it. It has logs that have fallen in it, and you leave them. And it has exposed gravel, so the salmon can lay their eggs in that. Oh. Most people want to pull all the logs out and clean it up. They want to, and Mary and her family had this like a lawn, no trees, lawn, creek, lawn, hillside. Oh. So we've, we've cultivated this growth of native species to give shade to the salmon and the water. And it's a very clean and wonderful little stream. Of course, it's named Olson Stream. Right. And uh, oh, that's wow. why Mary would be surprised. I see. So yeah. what's happened is it has been restored back to its optimum. That's our kind hope. Of, so, yeah, so that yes. it actually is functioning as a part of the ecology the way it should. Perfect, yes. Beautiful. And I will just have to brag a bit. When we got the farm, we had coho and chum salmon. Now we have pink and chinook. So we have all four that you could possibly have in this stream. They use this stream. That is amazing. Isn't that great? The smallest building on the farm is the smokehouse. Smoke is led into the floor through an underground chimney from a fire made behind the structure. So only the smoke and not the heat would filter up to the hanging salmon or venison. The farmhouse had rotted with age and disuse, with both porches gone. The architects used these historical photos in the restoration of the farm you can see today. When we got this property, the previous owners had cut out big holes and put in, rather poorly, some modern windows. The porches were gone, the roof was gone, really? flickers lived in the house. It was very much not what you see now. But we worked with some fabulous architects, BOLA Architects and Planning. They specialize in preservation architecture. So we did a lot of sleuthing with historic photos where Mary might be standing here at a 1920s photo. Oh. And then we could say, oh, so look, could that's what, what that looked yeah, like. Yeah. You know? um, and then we scraped through the layers of paint and found the first one, which was this Yellow. color. Oh, yeah. nice. 
And so we were able to bring it pretty much, as best as we know, back to what it was. This site is on the National Register of Historic Places. Yeah. And so pretty much everything we do has to meet some standards. Yes. And uh, so you can't just wing it or you can't put like an asphalt roof on because you want to. Yeah. You have to redo it in type. Yes. I love that. So look. Yes. Ah, yes, well, today we have apples. a lot of apples, and so we've set them out for people to enjoy. And this right here. That is the family bathtub, that. and you'd bathe on the back porch. <gasps> Look at And it. Alfred, the son of the family, is is known to have always shaved right there oh, every hi. morning. And there was Look a spigot this. of river water that came down right to next to him so he could fill up his basin and uh, sharpen up that uh, razor yes ma'am and a lot of the things we have here came back to the farm because we were have been friends a long time with the executor of that estate and so i'm pretty sure that that stool and that little wash basin had been here just for that purpose this is cool i really love Isn't it? it is yeah it's really cool so welcome to mary's farmhouse oh isn't this adorable this is so cute. So this is the kitchen area. Yeah, it's oh, the Lord. kitchen, dining room, and uh, there's a big pantry back there. And uh, we learned that pantries, unlike what I think of a pantry today, you know, like shelves, a closet or something, it was a big space where you actually prepped the food mm. and then you brought it out here to cook it and serve it. And so that's what this space is. And uh, gorgeous. so when we got the house, the only thing that's here now that was there before is that little panel of wainscoting. Uh, Everything else we had to recreate. Really? From, even the walls were gone. And so as we were cleaning out the site when we first got it, we found the doors and the windows. And it was like, oh, hey, we can figure yeah. out where they all go now. Yeah. yeah. And then this little This is the here. parlor. This parlor is complete with a fainting couch, lace curtains, and a wood stove for heat. The crayon drawings by Mary's daughter, Anna, and some of the books and magazines are among the original items. The house and barn were lit by carbide gas. Each light fixture you see today is electric, but are period appropriate. This is beautiful. You all have done a really, really stunning job. We had really good bones to work with, you might say. It was good. That's yeah. good. That's good. Mary Olson's farmhouse has been fully restored. Upstairs, there are two bedrooms, an office, and a reading room. The blue bedroom is bright and very inviting. Mary's daughter, Anna, was a self-taught artist and had an art table below the double windows. The family mending quarter contained a sewing machine ready for repairing overalls. The family stored their trunks and other items around the low edges of the attic room. This little curling iron is set inside the chimney of Anna's lantern, presumably to heat it up. The green bed was original to this farmhouse. Down the hall, the brown bedroom is set up for mom and dad, Mary and Alfred Olson. Some laundry hangs drying in the window. On the side table, you can see Alfred's pipe holder. I really love the fact that you've done all this work and that you've taken time oh, to spend well, with me, me today. There's a whole well, bunch of people I and a whole it. bunch of funders. But I thank get you. It. On their behalf, I thank you for your interest well, I really and for sharing you. this with the public. It's a gem and it's it not well enough known, so yeah. maybe this will help. Well, yeah. Patricia, again, I just, I really enjoyed it and I'm going to enjoy even more the hops and crops oh, that I'm about yes. to go Our with. annual festival, absolutely. <laughs> and taste a little beer. Yes. You have a great day. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. It's been fun. Thanks. Information for future festivals can be found at wrvmuseum.org slash hops and crops.